Good morning. Thanks for being with us today at the uh, Trinity Church Barry. As a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you, says the Lord. In addition to being the fourth Sunday in Lent, today is also Mothering Sunday, which dates back to the 16th century. On this Sunday, people returned to their mother church, the one where they had been baptized, by which people remained in touch with the community in which they had grown up. It became a day when servants of large households and country estates were allowed to return home to visit their families. Mothering Sunday also coincides with Later Sunday, also called Refreshment Sunday, a day of respite from fasting, halfway through the penitential season of Lent. And so it was celebrated with the making and eating of Simno cakes, as we will enjoy today at coffee hour. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall sh proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalm this morning is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The first reading is from 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked at Eliab and thought, Surely this his anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see, they look on the outward appearance. But the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. 
Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am he. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. Others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews do not believe that he had been blind and had received a sight until they called the parents of the man who had received a sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, 
I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin, but now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, amen. When Reverend Simon asked the lay readers if they would lead a service, my response was, there is a reason I haven't taken the preaching course at Tyndale Seminary. But God does ask us to do the uncomfortable and the scary. As God has invited me to grow, I ask your prayers that I will be able to speak clearly and that my words may inform or challenge you in your own faith journey. Today's psalm is a very familiar Psalm 23, The Lord is My Shepherd. Today's gospel is the miracle of a blind man restored to sight. What do these two scriptures have in common? How are they connected? What is God's message to us today on this fourth Sunday in Lent? Let's start by looking at the gospel miracle. Bernard of Clairvaux, the founder of Cistercian monastic order, brought scripture alive to his community by going deep into the details. This approach has been helpful to me in my own Bible study. So let's put ourselves into the context of this story. It was the Sabbath. Jesus was in Jerusalem in the first few months of his ministry. Just before this, Jesus had been teaching in the temple courts, and the Pharisees challenged his words and his authority. Jesus' teachings appeared to conflict with their own teaching. They went to stone him for his blasphemy, but he escaped. In the act of leaving the vicinity, Jesus saw a man that was blind from birth who begged for what he needed. Not everyone was allowed to beg, only those who were clearly unable to work and could not be supported by their family. The Jewish law took seriously the obligation to care for those who could not care for themselves. Because of his blindness and the extreme poverty of his parents, the blind man was permitted to beg and was well known in the Jerusalem community. Jesus stopped. Even though he was in flight from a threatening danger and escaping for his life, and it was a Sabbath, Jesus stopped to do an act that was both a kindness to the blind man and to the public to whom he would no longer be a burden and a sign of God's kingdom. The kindness was the complete healing of the man's blindness. Now let's look at the healing. It was accomplished in two steps. Jesus made clay of his own spit and the dirt at his feet and spread it on the man's eyes. As commanded by Jesus, the blind man went to the pool of Siloam, washed, and could then see. The pool of Siloam was a large stone structure built by King Ezekiah in the 5th century BC to provide fresh water to Jerusalem in the time of siege. A long tunnel connected the pool to the Gihon Spring outside the walls of the city. 
The pool was 225 feet in width with three sets of five steps on three of its four sides for access when the waters were at different levels. It was a well-known place, often used as a gathering place for out-of-town Jews making a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. The blind man had a desire to see. He trusted in Jesus. He obeyed his command to wash in the pool. And miracle of miracles, the man was fully healed. Jesus used ordinary materials to enact the healing, dirt from the ground, his own spit, and water from a pool, none of which were endowed with healing power. Why? To be evident to all that the man was healed only by the power of God in Jesus. This was so clear that the Pharisees diligently sought any other explanation for the apparent healing to uphold the beliefs of the day and the power and authority of themselves in the synagogue. There was dissension within their ranks. However, most rejected Jesus as being sent from God. But the man who was formerly blind all his life believed and accepted Jesus as Lord. What is God's message in this miracle for us on the fourth Sunday in Lent? How can it guide us into a deeper faith? Is it possible that God does miracles today? If you or your child were sick or disabled in whatever way and a stranger took it upon him or herself to heal, would you let a stranger put mud on your body? Would you believe in their power enough to go wash in a nearby pool or in your own bathtub? To many of us, Jesus would have looked like a false healer, a trickster trying to get attention for his own sake, and we would stay clear and miss the healing. How did the blind man perceive the truth in Jesus to trust him? He couldn't look into his eyes, but he might have, must have felt his love through his voice or his touch, or from the very fact of Jesus stopping and noticing him. Do you believe that God speaks to us and touches our lives today? From the constancy of many of you in the congregation, I think you would say yes. But have we opened ourselves to the full power of God and transformation in his image? Or have we limited God to what doesn't make us afraid? Have we missed opportunities when God reached out to us or when God had work for us to do? Whatever our answers are, we are each on a journey of coming to know God in new and wondrous ways more and more each day. We can look to Psalm 23 for a model of a life lived in relationship with God. David acknowledged the role of God in his life using the analogy of a shepherd and their sheep, which he knew so well. Just as David provided for his father's sheep, so God provides food, water, shelter for us. Knowing God was with him, David was not afraid. So we can face whatever circumstances life throws at us with confidence that God is with us in each place. God guided David in right paths. So God will guide us into right relationships with God, with others, and with creation. David believes that God's mercy and goodness will be with him all the days of his life. We too can live our lives learning the truth of this promise. This isn't something we accept and believe once, but something we need to nourish and practice each step of our journey. What about our corporate journey as Trinity Berry? How do we discern our path forward? Bishop Priscilla Shaw said in a reflection, God is up to what God has always been up to, the transformation, refounding, and reweaving of life across creation. And we are continually being invited by the Spirit to join in with God with our own agency and our intention and our willingness in this vast mission. God invites us, the people of Trinity Berry, to participate as agents of healing and reconciliation. And from Primate Lyndon Nichols, just as the Holy Spirit does for us individually, the Spirit invites us and will lead us through a process of self-examination and transformation as a church. We need to be open, to listen, and to respond. 
I leave you today with the words of a contemporary worship song by Dave Hunt titled, The Steadfast Love of the Lord, which reminds me of God's character and his promises of good for me and all who believe. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Great is your faithfulness. I pray for each of us to be alert to God's presence, to listen and watch for God's invitations, to be open to God's guidance, to respond to the opportunities that God creates for us, to share our story and God's love with those around us. Amen. Let us affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our prayers this morning are taken from the Prayers and Resources for Mothering Sunday on the Church of England website. When I say God of love, please respond, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have given us the right to be called children of God. Help us to show your love in our homes that they may be places of love, security, and truth. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, Jesus, your son, was born into the family of Mary and Joseph. Bless all parents and all who care for children. Strengthen those families living under stress, and may your love be known where no human love is found. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the family of the church. We pray for the Anglican Church of South Africa for the elimination of racial discrimination. In the Diocese of Toronto, for the Etobicoke Humber Deanery, and for the outreach and social advocacy efforts of St. Aidan Toronto, St. Andrew by the Lake, and St. Andrew Alliston. For the ecumenical work of the local Barry Housing and Homelessness Justice Network. For our own parish as we respond to the needs and walk beside those in our downtown neighborhood. We pray that all who come may find a home here, that the lonely, the marginalized, the rejected may be welcomed and loved. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, today we pray for the nations of the Commonwealth as they work together to promote democracy, international understanding, and world peace. We pray for the safety, health, and prosperity of their people. God of love, Hear our prayer. Loving God, we stand before you with the needs of your people on our hearts, those who are ill or suffering and who have asked for us to pray for them. Particularly, we pray for Al and Drew, Barbara, Christine, Dorothy, Elaine, Reverend Janet, Joanne, McKenna, Nancy, Nora, Reg, Richard, the Vela family, and those whom we individually remember before you now. Grant wisdom and skill to their doctors. Grant compassion and strength to those who care for them. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who have died and those who mourn. Comfort them with your presence, God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, we seek the brokenness, 
We see the brokenness of our world and we pray for healing among the nations, for food where there is hunger, for freedom where there is oppression, for joy where there is pain. We pray that your love may bring peace to all your children. God of love, hear our prayer. We close with a prayer from the Diocese of Toronto, Cast the Net. Blessed God, you make all things new. Guide us as we seek your will for our church, that we, together with the whole church of word and sacrament, may be leaven for the world's bread and wine of delight for hearts in need, a gathering strong for service and glad in praise, and to people listening and responding to your presence in their midst. Through Jesus, our Redeemer and steadfast companion, amen. The call this morning is for Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow, we may know the power of your presence to bind together and heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have a few announcements this morning. Uh, our Lent Lunch and Learn continues. The theme for our Lenten Lunch and Learn this year is When We Transformative Encounters with Jesus at 12 noon each Friday of Lent. Join us in the church to hear our guest speaker, and then if you'd like, join us for lunch in the hall for a cost of $10. Lenten Meal and Worship. During Lent, St. Margaret's and Westside Lutheran have joined for a shared meal and a service of worship around the theme of peace. Everyone is welcome on Wednesday evenings at 545 for a meal at 6, followed by a quiet, reflective service. The evening wraps up around 7. It'll be hosted on March 22nd at Westside and on the 29th of March at St. Margaret's. If you need more information, please contact Reverend Simon. There will be no spaghetti dinner this month, but we look forward to seeing everyone again on Saturday, April 29th. Trinity's Palm Sunday service will be on Sunday, April 2nd at 9 a.m. Uh, the reason for the change in time is to facilitate a regional Palm Sunday service at 11, being hosted at St. Margaret's with the five parishes. We would encourage you to attend this shared Palm Sunday if you are interested and able. And now the blessing. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon us now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>